Hello, my name is Ashante Reese, and the title for my reflection today is called Sweetness in the Key of Black, Notes on Baking and Belonging. When I describe a map to the door of no return to people who have not read it, I say, this book disoriented me. I first read it at an important crossroad in my thinking, writing, and being in the world. A time when I was in deep reflection about the utility of asking questions that are too easily answered and reconsidering what was at stake for me and for others in my work. There are so many things to pay attention to in this book. The beauty of the language, the intricacies of form, the knitting together of disparate geographies, how Dion Brand weaves together pieces of text in ways that are not simply about citation, but are about creation. All of it disoriented me. But as I tell my students when we read this book in my classes, between disorientation and reorientation is a pause. And in it, we can make choices about how to proceed with finding our bearings. Perhaps it is from disorientation that we choose to move differently, we craft differently, we build worlds differently. Dion Brand does not make grand gestures and promises in this book. In some ways, the challenge she issues is simple, even if it turns out to be one of the greatest challenges of our lives. She asks us to, quote, travel without a map, to travel without a way, end quote. I have taken to understanding Dion Brand's words as an invitation to engage in that cre creative process of reclaiming the Black body that she writes about, and to also reconfigure my own orientation to the terrains where Black life happens to reconsider the characteristics and the circumstances through which one becomes a wayfinder and the tools that we use to find our way. Cartography, she writes, is description, not journey. I read or feel confidence in that assertion. For almost a year, baking has been my chosen tool, the one that transforms me into a wayfinder. In my current work that attempts to map the relationships and distinctions between sugar as a product of racial capitalism and sweetness as a necessary component of Black life, I have found that many of the tools I've used before as an ethnographer fail me now. Rather than being on someone's porch or in their front room listening to story after story unfold, I find myself in my kitchen, often alone, without a recorder, without an interview guide, without a formal ethnographic method. But where I have lacked a map, Brand's words have assured me that a map is not at all what I need. Perhaps it is enough to give myself over to ways of knowing and being that exceed cartography. When I am baking, I feel the weariness that comes with what Brand names as a desire to shed the excesses and needs of the new world. Even as I work with sugar, a material object inextricably linked to empire, to theft of land and body, and the ongoing attacks on Black people. And yet I bake my way through the possibility of making something like beauty. And I feel too the weight of the desire to shed. To prepare for my reflections today, I went back to notes on my baking journey. And in several, I see and feel the tension between wanting to follow a map in this case, a recipe and what feels like a rebellion, a desire to be unruly and to find a different way. I realized that what I have recorded as mistakes and they actually are mistakes, might actually be me taking up Brand's call to travel without a map. Note one, vegan butter pecan bundt cake, take one. I tried this recipe from the Black Girl Baking Cookbook. I am notorious for half or misreading recipes. And in this case, I used whole wheat flour instead of white. Now, I don't know what whole wheat flour is good for, but I know it ain't good for this cake. An unintentional experiment and a fail. The cake came out of the oven, cracking as it cooled. When I tried to flip it onto the cake plate, it crumbled. I topped it with the glaze anyway, and it tasted good. Savannah said it had the beauty of a broken heart. I liked that. It reminded me of the conditions of living in this world, half together, sweetness amongst ruins. And what do we do with the crumbles? We find beauty in them anyway. Black life is improvised, yes, but the tools, 
the ingredients we use to build our lives matter. How we use the ingredients to make a life matters. Improvise too much and we just might crumble. There are crumbles and Dion Brand reminds us, quote, even beauty was brutal. Even beauty is brutal and crumbs are a form of beauty. Dion Brand's invitation to travel without maps, to engage in the creative project of reclaiming the black body and to inhabit this life and world as a wayfinder influences so much of what I do, even baking. When I am working with sugar, baking with the sugar from a company that used enslaved and incarcerated men and women to produce it, but whose presence also built an entire city, I feel the weight of the new world, of working with this material object that destroys lives. And then I remember, quote, all that emanates from the door is not dread, but also creativity. And so I bake and I embark on a journey to transform this project associated with empire into something more closely linked with beauty, joy, and care, even if it's only for a moment, even if, and possibly especially when, quote, ghosts try to step into life, end quote even if and possibly especially when the selves I bake towards and for are irretrievable. Note two, chocolate chocolate veneer cake. It seems that I am always having to improvise without even trying. This cake's icing calls for coconut cream, which I have not worked with before, and apparently it requires you to refrigerate it overnight, and well that isn't going to happen since I am baking this cake today for a housewarming. The internet says that I can use heavy whipping cream instead, so I use a vegan version. We'll see how it turns out. I remember hearing Zanelli Maholi talk about using whatever they could find to use in their self-portraits. I've thought a lot about that today and other days while baking, taking one thing and using it for the purpose of an entirely different thing, or being so committed to the thing you're creating, you make do with what you have. In a map to the door of no return, there is a steady insistence that urges me to suspend belief in the maps that have been given to me. The maps I have been told will get me from point A to point B. As someone who is drawn to geography, both literal places and the field of study itself, this insistence feels like an unlearning, a chiding toward making space for all the ways that we know land, sea, cities, and selves. This insistence scares me a little because I have to ask over and over again, how do I know what I know? And what if what I choose to make space for never comes or never returns? Cartography is description, not journey. If books are our mentors and companions, then a map to the door of no return has been a compass for me, not dictating my way, but trusting that I might find it on my own. It has chided me, compelled me, questioned me, and soothed me. Almost every day leading up to this gathering, I have worried that no words would come. I have worried that I could not possibly make known how much this book means to me. But if I take a map to the door of no return at its word, making known is not the only or even the primary task at hand. And because I trust this book as one of my compasses, I sit. I sit here in the middle of a haunting and lies, in the middle of piles of sugar and the history that enters with and precedes me. Hauntings and ghosts are welcome here, even if they are heavy. Hauntings and ghosts compel me to look for and to create sweetness. This, for now, is how I answer Brand's call to undertake the creative project of reclaiming the Black body that is always underway. Thank you.